Hi, this is Ocean K with a new rack extension called the PCV. It's a probability CV trigger step sequencer that allows you to generate different types of CV signals in custom ranges based on custom probabilities. So let's see how it works. This is the PCV. It's a step sequencer. It's got 16 rows of dials, although you can have sequences anywhere from one step to 32 steps. Each step has three dials, the probability, which determines how often something is triggered on that step. If it's 100%, it's triggered every time the sequencer gets to that step. If it's zero probability, it's never triggered on that step when the sequencer gets to it. If it's somewhere in between, it's triggered that Num that amount, so 55%, means that 55% of the time when the sequencer gets to this step, it'll trigger a, a CV signal. The min CV is the bottom range of the CV signal. The max CV is the top range. So in this case, the min is 0 and the max is 100, meaning that when the sequencer gets here, it'll trigger something It'll trigger a CV signal somewhere between 0% and 100%. But we can customize that range. We can say that we want a CV signal somewhere between 44% and 56%. And if we have it as the same, uh, prob uh, the same uh, percentage, it'll trigger a signal exactly at 56%. So that's what the sequencer is. Let's see how it sounds. If we've got a maelstrom here, Let's go ahead and reset this device. We'll change the polyphony to 1, just so it doesn't sound confusing. We'll reset the PCV. Let's turn this around. We've got a CV out. Let's go ahead and put that into gate in, just so we can get some notes being sounded. To start the PCV sequencer, we press the play on Reason, on the Reason sequencer. And we've got the PCV that's just hitting the gate. Now the gate of a device is essentially the trigger of on. It's also the velocity of that trigger. So we will hear triggers from you know, zero velocity to 100% velocity. Just for ease of programming, just to show you what's going on, let's change the steps to four. And I'm gonna bump up that minimum because if the minimum, if the CV signal is ever zero, it'll just drop out. That's why we hear an occasional dropout. Let's change the speed to eight to one eighth. So now we've got signals going into our gate anywhere from very small amounts to maximum amounts. That's not sounding terribly exciting. So let's bring a second PCV and let's take this out into CV. CV sequence control is essentially what note we want to play. We'll bring this down to four steps. Let's change the speed to maybe an eighth note. And now this is playing notes between zero and 100%. If we wanted to change the range, we can have, let's say, these bottom notes, these first step one and step two to a range there. And let's have step three and step four at a slightly higher range. All right. Now, triggering gates and notes, that's OK. But generally, CV is a lot more interesting when you start controlling all of these other dials. So for instance, Let's change these to quarter notes. And let's say we wanted to change the rate of a shift change. So we wanted to make something sound like that. If we wanted to control this rate knob with a PCV, we can do that. Now let's change this to two steps. And we'll change this to, how about a quarter of a note? Now if we look at the back of the maelstrom, there is no modulation input for the mod A rate. But that's OK. We can just put all of this in a combinator. And we'll use the combinator's programming. So the maelstrom, let's use rotary 1 
to do the modulator rate. Then if we put the CV out of the third maelstrom into rotary one, we see this dial changing. Now notice that the rate only seems to be going from the middle point to the maximum, which means that this rate dial is probably a bipolar, meaning that it goes from negative 100 to positive 100. That's okay. On the PCV, we have three types of CV signals. We've got unipolar, which goes from 0 to 100%. We've got bipolar, that goes from negative 100% to positive 100%, and we've got note CV, which goes from 1 to 127. So if we change this to bipolar and look at the dial, you'll see that now it's going from its bottom to its top. Let's drop this octave down. Now, if we don't want this rate to go all the way from its very bottom to its very top, there are a couple ways we can do that. One, certainly, is the programmer in the combi. We can change our min-max values, but we're not always using the programmer in the combinator. So let's go ahead and change the range in our PCV. Let's say that we only wanted it to go somewhere between its midpoint and its maximum point. If we change those dials, we'll see that's essentially where this dial is, is hanging out, from its midpoint to its maximum. Let's say we don't want it to go to its all the way maximum. We can do that. So that's how we can use the PCV through our sequencer. We can control the ranges, we can control the probabilities. Right now we have it uh, triggering every single time on the gate, every single time on the note, and every single time on the uh, rate change. We don't have to do that. We can change the notes, maybe we'll change it every time on the first beat, but only sometimes on the rest. So we hear that the note's always changing here, but sometimes here, only sometimes here, and only sometimes here. We can do the same thing here, where it's only changing some of the time depending on what our probability actually is. Now the PCV doesn't only control sequencers, it controls other things. Let's, for instance, open up uh, a combinator that's included with the PCV where five PCVs are controlling five different drum channels in a redrum. Let's listen to how this sounds. So what do we have here? We've got one PCV that's controlling the bass drum. If we solo the bass drum, We can look, the probability for step one is hitting every time, for two it's hitting none of the time because it's at zero, for three none of the time, for four about 28% of the time, for step eight a small amount of time, for step nine a large amount of time, although not every time, it's only 88% of the time, so that's most of the time but not always. Ten has some of the time, twelve some of the time, so you can see that these are the triggers. Now, when step one, it triggers every time the trigger, the, the CV signal that's going to send is somewhere between 80% and 100% of a unipolar signal. So it's going to be somewhere between 100% or 80% and 100%, which means that this bass drum is going to be you know, relatively loud. For this time, on step four, the Minimum is 38% and the maximum is 52%. So the CV signal is going to be in that range, which is softer. So in this case, we can control how often a probability, or how often a CV signal is triggered, and we can control the range. So we can have a very high probability of being triggered, but a very low range. So it would have a soft volume. Or we can have a very low probability, but a very high volume. So this is a way of triggering the probabilities of something being triggered and the value of what's actually being sent being completely independent. So this is a way of 
of triggering drums through probability CV triggering where you can trigger probabilities and volumes completely independent of each other. Now while we're here, let's take a look at a few different things for, of the PCV. The piece, each PCV has a pause button. This just stops the sequencer from playing. This is automatable, so you can control when it stops and starts through Reason's sequencer. We've talked about the CV types. Each PCV has its own shuffle. In this case, the bass and the snare is on one shuffle, but the snare two is on a different shuffle, and both the clothes and the hi-hats are on different shuffles, so each PCV can have its own shuffle. We talked earlier about steps. Step is how many steps are in each pattern. You can have any number of steps. Here's a, a sequence of just six steps. And speed is the resolution of each step. So right now, it's set at 1 16th, which means that each step has the value of 1 16th note. But that can go anywhere from a half note, where each step is a half note's length, to 32, uh, 30 second notes. So each step is worth 1 32nd note. Changes back to eighth. We've got a couple other dials, but they're easier to talk about with a non-drum device. So let's stop this. Let's get rid of this device. Let's try a Thor this time. And we'll bring up a PCV. Let's bring up two of them. Let's reset the Thor. We'll change the polyphony to one just so it doesn't confuse us. Let's send a gate. And we'll start the sequencer. Now, I'm going to set the second PCV to the pitch bend. So this is controlling this pitch bend. Now, if you notice, this is just a hard change between each pitch bend, but we do have a portamento dial where we can start to glide into those changes. Portamento at 100% means that it takes the full step resolution to change to the new note. So right now, the speed is set at one quarter note, each step is worth one quarter note. Portamento at 100% means it takes a quarter note's length to get to the new note. And obviously anywhere in between. Gate is a signal where we can determine how long the signal is played. So gate at zero is very, very short as you can hear. Gate at 100% is actually four times the length of any one particular step. So for instance, if we had a sequence that was four steps long, you will hear that the gate will take the whole time. But if a gate only at 50%, you'll hear that it only lasts for twice as long as any particular step. All right. So that's pretty much what we have. We've got the pause button, the CV type. We didn't talk about seed. Seed is the seed for these probability dials. If you're not familiar with probabilities and seeds, you might want to take a look at the intro video for the PDT2, which is a different rack extension device that I did that uses probabilities and seeds a lot. It explains it a little bit. Uh, there's also a video for a rack extension device called Glitch, and that explains how to use seeds and probabilities. But it's essentially the seed is the starting place for the probabilities to be determined the random probabilities. And so if you like where your probabilities are and all your dials, but you don't like 
the sort of random selection of those probabilities, you can just change the seed and it gives you a whole new set of probabilities. We talked about shuffle. We've talked about the three dials for each step. The gate is the length, the steps is the number of steps in the sequence, the speed is the resolution, the duration of each particular step, and the portamento is the change in CV signal between steps. If we turn the uh, device around, we've got our CV outs, which is what I'll use, or what we'll use most often, but we've also got a seed in. This allows you to make completely random choices every time the PCV plays. Otherwise, if you don't change the CV, the seed randomly, every time you play and you keep all the dials absolutely the same, it'll play the same random sequence. It'll be a random sequence, it'll just be the same random sequence each time. The seed changes it to a new random sequence. So that's the PCV. If you have any questions, go ahead and shoot me an email. The link should be on the Rack Extension page. Otherwise, I'm in the forums quite frequently, so go ahead and post a question there. I hope you enjoy the PCV. Thanks.